All right, so let's talk about neurostroke syndromes. Um, so first off, here's a little stick figure dude. Um, I like to think about the stick figure because most of these stroke syndromes are either strokes of you know, brain, brain stem, or spinal cord. And so the question is, how do you tell them apart? Well, there's a couple different categories. One is you can look at, um, is there like a gross motor or sensory deficit, uh, usually on one side? Um, are there cranial nerve deficits? And then are there higher order deficits? So like going through brain, brain stem, spinal cord, uh, you see, you know, the brain obviously has gross motor problems when you have strokes of the brain, as well as higher order things such as speech or word finding, things of that nature, but not so much in the cranial nerves aspect. Meanwhile, the brain stem also has the leg, arm, gross motor, gross sensory, sort of long track signs. Um, but it also has cranial nerve issues, but no higher order stuff. And then last but not least, spinal cord is all gross motor, gross sensory, long track signs, and no cranial nerves or higher order stuff. So here's the way I, I drew it out for step one. I actually drew this little diagram on my whiteboard, and it was kind of nerdy, but it worked. Um, so first I drew a box square-ish thing, and then divided it into three parts. Um, then above that, I sort of ballooned it out, and below it, kind of tapered it in. So what we got was the, the brain, the three parts of the brain stem, midbrain, pons, medulla, and then the spinal cord at the bottom. So then the next step is to try to remember where all the cranial nerve uh, nuclei exist, just sort of roughly. So uh, the easy thing I remembered was that down the midline, it goes three... 6 and 12, which, you know, are all, you know, divisible by 3, so that seemed kind of convenient. And those are, you know, grossly motor things, so they hang out in the medial aspect of the brainstem. Uh, then the other ones are a little bit trickier, so you got to remember that uh, the fourth cranial nerve nuclei exists in the part of the a little bit more lateral than 3. Then in the pons, you have uh, cranial nerves nuclei for 5, 7, and 8. And I put them in that order because it kind of makes sense going from motor things being medially to la lateral things being sensory stuff. So, you know, five is a little bit more motor than seven, which just has some taste. And then eight, which is purely sensory, um, being more lateral than the others. Then uh, in the medulla, you've got the lateral medulla. You've got uh, cranial nerve 11, 10, and 9 existing out there. So, okay, so what, what do you do next? Well, then I would draw in the little, the actual uh, vascular supply of these structures. So I'd first start by drawing a little diamond in between the uh, pons and the medulla, then draw two, or two lines straight down, going either direction, up or down. And so that would represent the anterior spinal artery inferiorly, and above that, the basilar artery. Then I would add in some dashed lines from the other tips of the triangle, or the diamond going inferiorly, which are representing the vertebral, artery, vertebral arteries leading up to form the anterior spinal artery and the basilar artery. Then I'd add in two lines up at the junction of the midbrain and, and brain, which, is, which represents the superior cerebellar artery and the posterior cerebral artery. Then I draw a little loop above the posterior cerebral artery, kind of a half circle, and then a line projecting laterally two lines projecting laterally, which are going to be the middle cerebral arteries, and two lines projecting superiorly, which are going to represent the anterior cerebral arteries. Then we also have to add in the two other sort of looping arteries in this drawing, which is first the, uh, the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, which wraps around the pons, supplying the lateral portions, and then the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, which is going to supply the lateral parts of the medulla. Um, so now at this point, then I look for little keywords that try to localize these lesions. And most of the time, I just use the cranial nerve nuclei. So having this map kind of helped uh, because the long track signs like the hemiparesis and paraplegia and sort of these gross motor sensory things never seem to really help localize since, you know, most of these modalities are carried throughout the brainstem at all levels. Um, so I kind of remember keywords like the term like blown pupil. So blown pupil would be um, 
in the context of brainstem infarctions, you think of maybe an aneurysm of the posterior cerebral artery or the superior cerebellar artery, because if you remember from gross anatomy, cranial nerve three as it comes off the midbrain, crosses between those two as it exits the, the uh, ventral part of the brainstem. Uh, so then for, I'd also look for maybe something that says like lateral gaze. So if they say that they have lateral gaze palsy or an astagmus on lateral gaze, I'd be thinking, okay, it's probably something to do with cranial nerve six, which I know cranial nerve six is in the middle of the, of the pons. So what supplies in the middle of the pons? That's the basilar artery or the pontine branches of the basilar artery. So that helped me identify that. Next, I could also look for things like facial palsy or hearing loss. So that would indicate like lateral, lateral pons where cranial nerves five, seven, and eight lived, which is supplied by the uh, anterior inferior cerebellar artery or ACA. Next, um, if I heard anything about tongue, so tongue fasciculations, tongue atrophy, tongue deviating one way, you think middle of the medulla. So middle of the medulla is supplied by the anterior spinal artery. Um, likewise, if I heard anything about dys dysphagia or hoarseness um, in the context of all these long track signs as well, you'd think, okay, um, something going through the lateral, some infarction of the lateral medulla. In that case, that'd be the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. And I think that's it. So I hope that recorded. But yeah, that was my spiel. Thank you. Yeah, what file format is that in? I don't know, but I actually now I don't know if I actually recorded it. Okay, that was your practice one. Bummer. <laughs>